So anytime trig is involved, I'm looking at that function and I'm saying, first of all, is this just straight up the derivative of one of my trig functions? It is not. We don't have none of our trig functions derivatives equals sine squared cosine. Okay. So then my next thought is between those two trig functions, which one is the derivative of the other? Now, in the, in the case of sine and cosine, you could go either way, okay? But we're going to pick sine because cosine is the derivative of sine. And the reason why we pick sine over cosine here is because sine is squared. Now, when we pick it as our u, we're going to leave the squared off. And you'll see why here in a second. But we're going to leave the squared off. And we are allowed to do that, okay? We are allowed to do that. Take the derivative of your u with respect to x, the derivative of sine is cosine. Do not forget, though, that it was not just the sine of x, it was the sine of 3x, so we've got to multiply that by 3. Now, we don't have just a loose 3 anywhere in our problem, so that's got to go to the other side, so we've got 1 third du is equal to cosine of 3x dx. Okay, so move the 3 to the left side because we don't have just a constant of 3 anywhere in our problem. Move that so it's 1 third on the left side and then move the dx over. So let's go over here and do our substitution. Sine squared of 3x. Well, sine of 3x was our u, so that is going to become u squared. It's kind of like with our square root problems, okay? We don't actually use the square root as part of our u, which is what's under the square root. Same thing here. We don't use the squared as part of our u, just what is being squared. Cosine of 3x dx is going to be replaced with 1 third du, and I'm going to put that 1 third in front of the integrand just to get it out of the way so I don't have to worry about it at all until later on. All right, so anti-differentiate. Add 1 to our exponent, divide by our new exponent. Don't forget the plus c. So that gives us 1 ninth of sine cubed 3x plus c. When I substitute my u back in. Okay, and you can always do a quick derivative check. Okay, take the derivative of that really quickly. If we were to take the derivative, it's uh, kind of a two-sided chain rule. Okay, first of all, the trig function is being cubed, so we've got to bring down that exponent, subtract one from that exponent. Then we've got to take the derivative of the trig function. Then we've got to take the derivative of the angle. And when we simplify all that stuff, the 3 times 3 times the 1 ninth goes away, and we're left with what we started with. Okay. Yeah, that one's a little bit nastier, but you'll be all right. You'll feel smarter for it. Okay? How about one like this? Yes, I'm sorry. Do I need to go back? Mm-hmm. As long as you write it like this. Now, they don't prefer it, but your parentheses would have to be around the entire trig function. So that would still count, right? That, yeah, that, that would be okay. That would be okay. Just do not write it like this or like this. Okay? Those are not good. This is okay. It's not the best, but it's okay. It is equivalent. Well, sometimes they do. I mean, honestly, I honestly I have never seen U substitution as part of a free response question. Okay, these are going to be multiple choice questions. Um, there is integration in your free response questions. Um, but I've never seen, like, just they're asking you to do U substitution as part of the problem, okay? Um, but, yes, you do. It's like units. you you got to have that DX in there if you're doing it. 
Okay, so does everybody see the difference between these four expressions right here? The last two, bad, okay? They are not the same thing. Um, now, you will see expressions like that, but they're just not equivalent to sine cubed of 3x. All right. Okay, back to this example. Okay, back to this example. Now, this one is not so bad. Really, if we wanted to, we could FOIL that out um, and just use our power rule because it's just a binomial times a binomial, but it is specifically set up for U substitution. Which one of these should be our U? The first one or the second one? The second one, right? Because its derivative is the first one. When we take the derivative of that, we get 2x plus 1. So if you get one and it's set up like that and none of them will give you the derivative of the other one, like if you take the derivative of one, that gives you the, mm -hmm. the answer for that one. Then you probably just need to multiply it out. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll tell you something else in a minute that will tip you off to that. Okay, so let's see here. 2x plus 1 dx becomes our du. x squared plus x was our u. So we've got u squared over 2 plus c. So when we substitute that back in, So something that will tip you off to the fact that you should use U substitution right here, your answer would not look like this. If you multiply that out, you would just get a polynomial for an answer. Yes, this is a polynomial, but it's not in standard polynomial form. Okay? Um, so that, that would tip you off. If, if you saw a problem like this and you do think, I should do U substitution and you start to do it and the other binomial is not the derivative of the other one, um, glance at your answer choices. If your answer choices are in polynomial form, that probably means that you should have just started by multiplying it out and using your power rule. But if it's in this kind of weird factored form and a fraction, it's probably because you should have used U substitution. Okay. And that was arguably a much quicker process than if we had boiled that out and then applied our pocket rule. Um, you know, once you become more comfortable with this, it's very quick. Okay, um, how about this one? Okay, now it's, I would suggest writing it on your paper. I can't do this in the computer easily. Uh, I would actually write it like this, okay? That's what it should look like, but I just put it all in one line. <clears throat> You could, but that's not going to do you any good right now. Uh, I mean, initially. If you do that initially, it's not going to allow you. You're going to have to do U substitution one way or another. No, I don't know. Okay, yes. Okay, so what should our U be? The top or the bottom? The bottom, okay. I think it's pretty obvious that its derivative is in the top. Um, but another tip-off is that it is a binomial expression squared. Those are usually going to be your u's. Okay, so when we take the derivative of that, we do get negative 4x, which is conveniently our numerator. So when we go into substitute, our numerator is now du, our denominator was u, but there was that squared there. Now to take the antiderivative of this, we do need to express this as u to the negative 2, so we can apply our power rule. Add 1 to our exponent, divide by our new exponent, don't forget our plus c. Uh, so if we clean this up, the negative 1 exponent moves that to the denominator. And the negative 1, we don't leave just plain negatives in the denominator, so we move the negative to the numerator. Now, if that had been a negative 2, the 2 would have had to stay in the bottom. Okay, it's just the negative that we're moving. Because I had to have, I had to have a number up there. 
because the, the U moved to the denominator. I had to have something to hold the place of the numerator because there was nothing else there. Okay. All right. So these haven't been too terrible. Let's look at this one. Not that this one's terrible, but it is a little bit more involved. <laughs> I set that up great, didn't I? Okay. So. Ah, the antiderivative of the indefinite integral of x times the square root of 2x minus 1 dx. Now, I think y'all are getting the hang of these, so you're looking at that and you're thinking, my u should be 2x minus 1, but its derivative is not x. Okay? But it's okay. We can fix it. Okay? We can fix it. So, we are still going to let our u be 2x minus 1. So its derivative is 2, which also we don't have just a free-floating 2 anywhere in our problem, so let's go ahead and move that over so that we've got 1 half du is equal to dx. But that still doesn't take care of all of our problems. So let me start my substitution and see how far I get. All right, that x in front of the square root, I can't do anything with that. I, it's not part of my du expression, so i got to leave it there. I can rewrite the square root of 2x, plus, uh, 2x minus 1. That would be u to the 1 half. And my dx I can replace with 1 half du. Now, we've got to do something to turn that x into a u. We can't do anything right now because our variables don't agree. We are integrating with respect to u. We can't do that with an x sitting in there. Okay? We can't just treat it like it's a constant or just kind of ignore it for a second. We can't do that. So we are going to have to use something over here to substitute for x so that it's in terms of u. Does anybody see what we can do? Yeah, exactly. We can solve that top expression right there for x. So I'm going to add 1. So u plus 1 is equal to 2x. And then, I know y'all don't like this, but I would rather do it this way. I'm going to multiply by 1 half. And I'm not going to multiply it out. Okay? I'm not going to multiply it out. And there's reason. Because that 1 half is a constant, a scalar multiple, so I can put it back in front of the integral. So I've already got a 1 half there. There's another one half when I substitute this expression for x. I'm trying to keep it color coded here so you can see what was there and then what I put in there. Okay? So we have this in blue, the one half integral of u to the one half u. And then we replace x with one half times u plus one. Now, there's one more thing, though, that we have to do before we can integrate. We can't integrate with this in that form, right? What do we need to do? Distribute, Distribute the u to the 1 half. Okay. Now, you may have, like, one problem like this on the exam. But if you can get that one problem right, it, it's worth me going through this problem. Okay. Um, so u times u to the 1 half is u to the 3 halves. 1 times u to the half is u to the 1 half. Okay, now we can finally anti-differentiate. So keep the 1 fourth in front because I'm going to have more than two terms. I need to put a set of parentheses here. Uh, add 1 to my exponent. So that's u to the 5 halves. When I divide by 5 halves, it turns into 2 fifths in front u to the 1 half becomes 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. And then my plus c goes outside of my parentheses there. So my final answer is 
And honestly...